Hi there, this is Corey Andres with Central New Mexico Community College using CNM Glass to outline uh, some of the major pathways to generate ATP in prokaryotes. So there's some overlap with eukaryotic pathways, but some things uh, they're a little bit uh, special for uh, certain cell types. So the classic way to illustrate this is starting with glycolysis. That is literally the splitting of sugar, so lysis and glyco. And glycolysis normally shows glucose going in. I always remind folks that is not the only sugar molecule by far uh, that can enter some of these breakdown processes. So other molecules can enter at different stages. So glucose isn't the only option. It's just kind of the classic one that's shown. And from that, you get two molecules of pyruvic acid. Actually, let's just do this. Just draw the two, write that out. So as we go through things like Krebs, keep in mind it's, it's circling around twice because we have pyruvic acid. Okay, and uh, during that process, you're going to make two ATPs. You actually synthesize four but you need two to get it started. You also have some waste here, carbon dioxide, and re remember that that carbon is coming from the carbon and glucose that's there. So you're gonna see carbon dioxide a little bit later. And then you have two molecules of your electron carrier, which is NADH, and that's gonna go, if there's an electron transport chain in this particular uh, organism, that would go to the electron transport chain. Uh, it gets uh, recycled in fermentation, I'll mention that. Okay, so if oxygen is absent, you have a couple of options here, and I'll start to draw them out and then come back and pick up some details. So if op ox oxygen is absent, One option is to go into fermentation. Now fermentation has every uh, variety there in terms of different products that can be made. We can even bioengineer organisms to ferment and make products they don't typically make naturally. So fermentation we've manipulated a lot, but even in nature there's many, many different possibilities. So we're just gonna list kind of some general categories. We're not gonna worry about quantities here because there is so much variation. So uh, in the process of fermentation, you might get carbon dioxide gas that forms. Uh, the big thing that fermentation does is it recycles NAD so that it can go back into glycolysis. You need uh, NAD to add the hydrogen back on so that you can reduce that. And uh, there's no ATP. Now, depending on how that's illustrated, it almost can kind of look like that if you're looking at a fermentation pathway. But if you look carefully, it's always showing glycolysis going into fermentation. So I like to think of those as separate pathways. So no ATP in fermentation. The only ATP is really coming from glycolysis. Fermentation is only there to recycle that NADH back into NAD plus so you can send it there. Without that, this uh, glycolysis pathway would break down and then you wouldn't get any ATP and then you'd really be in trouble. Uh, what gets interesting with fermentation uh, in terms of human interest is that uh, you get a lot of these waste products. So you get things like acids, you can get mixed acids or single acid fermentation, and then alcohols. So those can be measured uh, in terms of identifying uh, different types of uh, organisms to see what kind of acids they make, or what kind of alcohols they make. But also we use those commercially all the time to produce things like citric acid, uh, you know, butyric acid, different acids that we use, and then alcohol as well, everybody's familiar with. So prokaryotes do a lot of this. There are some other microorganisms. So you're probably thinking of yeast when you think of alcohol production. So yes, there are other microorganisms. We're focusing on the prokaryotic pathways, but you can, you can think of applying most of this pathway to that as well. Okay, so another option if oxygen is absent is something called anaerobic respiration. So you might only think of respiration as happening with oxygen and uh, there's an electron transport chain. There is a very similar form of that uh, that is an anaerobic pathway. So we go into anaerobic respiration.
And again, this is highly variable with different organisms, so we're not going to focus too much on quantity of how much ATP and NADH gets made as we go. We're just going to kind of focus on the big pathway that's here. So that does Krebs cycle, and we'll do, let's see, uh, many books will list that it just as part of the Krebs cycle. Some books will list that it does all of it. So I'm just going to keep it simple here. You've got Krebs cycle. Uh, my understanding is that you need oxygen to complete the full round of the Krebs cycle. And then from there, uh, you can go into the anaerobic electron transport chain. And I'll diagram the electron transport chain in more detail in a different video. So you have what's called anaerobic. I'm going to shorten this. Electron transport chain. And that occurs in the cell membrane. There'll be a series of transport proteins. And again, this is in prokaryotes. So if you're familiar with the eukaryotic model, you're thinking of all this happening in the mitochondria. So prokaryotes don't have membrane-bound organelles. So this is happening. The only other cell membrane you have to make that charge differential is the cell membrane. But the overall idea with the electron transport, I'll just briefly mention here, is to build up a charge differential. And then you have a molecule or an, an enzyme so I'll diminish it, called ATP synthase. And I'll write that again in case I'm off screen here. And what'll happen is as that charge uh, gate is kind of let open, that ATP synthase, and it leaks through, it will then join ADP with ATP. and really put that phosphate group back on. So I should put that there, a little inorganic phosphate. Joins that back together. It takes a lot of energy to do that. So what makes this different? Okay, so this is pretty much what you see in the aerobic chain, except for you don't have oxygen. These are organisms that cannot live in the presence of oxygen. So their electron acceptors, I was playing around with my colors here. So their electron acceptors are non-oxygen molecules, so things like SO3 or SO4, and there's a, some variation here. I'm just listing some examples. Uh, NO3 and carbonate. So nitrates, carbonates, and then they're going to be reduced as they go through this uh, down into things like uh, H2S, ammonia, even further down into just uh, elemental nitrogen. Oops, I'm losing my field here. And then things like methane. And I don't have all my charges just right, forgive me. Uh, so they would, those are kind of end products that you would look for there. Okay, and so that's basically what aerobic is, uh, aerobic respiration. So we're going to draw that over here, and we're just going to use a different electron acceptor. So I'm going to use my blue here for O2 present. Uh, organisms that are facultative can switch between uh, the O2 present. Typically, they're switching to the fermentation pathway. They're switching between those two because if you think about it, um, there's going to be different proteins that are going to have to be embedded here in the cell membrane. Uh, so most likely, they're going to be switching between uh, the aerobic version and the fermentation. And those are facultative organisms. Uh, many organisms that are anaerobic are obligate, so they are going that pathway all the time. Um, obligate fermenters do exist. Uh, however, because they get so little, they get no ATP at fermentation, they're always counting on this kind of meager output of ATP over here. So uh, they need an incredible uh, amount of substrate to kind of keep going. Oh, speaking of, so as we get on to, and I didn't write all of our different uh, products that can come out here, but when we look at an, um, anaerobic electron transport chains, we're going to have something in the range of... Um, <sighs> It's going to vary. I think I've seen things as low as 2 to 4, but uh, you know, 2 to maybe 36 to 38 uh, ATPs that are made. So really, your bang for the buck is always happening over here in, in, in the electron transport chain. So fermentation, eh, Krebs, you get a little bit, glycolysis, you get a little bit, but not much. Okay, so let's get back over here. We'll talk a little more details here. So now we're going to get into the Krebs cycle again. So again, this is... This is oxygen present, so you're on one path or the other. And things coming off of Krebs are going to be CO2, 
and it's going to be the rest of your CO2 off of uh, your starting molecule of glucose. And I'll reiterate, glucose isn't the only player in the game. You're going to have your FADH that you can see as well, FADH2. And then you get about eight molecules of NADH. Notice that I am putting numbers on these. Uh, that's because these are a little bit more reliable in terms of output uh, that you might see there. So we can count on those numbers a little bit more. Okay, so that then um, we'll move on to aerobic electron transport, which is going to look a lot like what I just drew. I'm going to kind of squish it in here. And it's these two molecules that are going over. And I didn't draw that over here that you would get uh, NADH. And I'm not sure that you always get FADH2, but uh, again, that's what was coming in over here. And also the NADH you made up here is coming over here as well. So all the NADHs that you're making are heading over to electron transport, ultimately. This is kind of what's carrying the, the kind of the energy powerhouse, if you will, because as you strip these electrons off and you go from the, uh, you separate these plus and minus charges, uh, that's where you're gonna get that energy differential, these plus and minuses, and you'll generate the ATP. Okay, so now we're in aerobic electron transport. I'm gonna abbreviate again. Going to draw the same thing. We got cell membrane. I'm going to try to squeeze over a little bit here, give myself a little more space. And I didn't draw in the embedded uh, transport proteins that are here, but of course those would be here. And maybe I should switch that to blue to kind of be more consistent with our ATP synthase color because that's also a, a protein molecule as well. Now I can squeeze in ATP synthase. And again, we're at the cell membrane in prokaryotes. It's the only membrane they have to kind of separate these charges. So as the uh, NADH and FADH2 move down the line, uh, they're going to get these hydrogens uh, stripped off. And you're going to end up with uh, pluses on the outside, kind of H pluses. Draw that in a way you can see it. Okay, so we're separating our charges again. So I always think of this as kind of like a car battery where you've got those two separate cells and you've got pluses on one side and then you've got your electrons on the other side. So I can draw that as little e for the electrons. Those, again, all came from that H. Okay, and as it moves down. Now, you can't just take one protein typically and grab it off. So you've got a, a, you've got a line here of proteins, each one a little more electronegative than the next. They can kind of strip it off one and then the next and then the next and then the next. And then we get to our super electronegative buddy, uh, oxygen. Now here the electron acceptor, the final electron acceptor, because we've been accepting electrons all the, along the line, is now going to be our O2. And that's what makes this aerobic. Okay, so our waste product is going to then end up being water. So that's going to go to water. And that's a, uh, a waste product you see in uh, aerobic respiration. And the uh, same process is going to happen where you're taking a DP, and as these molecules come over, sorry, as these ions come over, I misspoke, combine with these negative electrons here, I'm going back to my little par car battery analogy, boom, you have energy that's there. And so that's going to then be converted to ATP. Okay, and then the yield here is going to be somewhere between uh, 36, and this is for the whole process. This is what they always call it ideal, meaning that you didn't lose any of the protons that might have gone over the top, anything like that. So uh, that comes from um, all the sum of the NADHs you've got. You've got up in uh, glycolysis and in Krebs. That's going to bring you your 10 NADHs. That will yield uh, about 30. And then the FADH2s uh, yield about four more. So keep in mind that you also get a little bit of ATP made uh, up in Krebs, excuse me, up in Krebs and in glycolysis. So when you look at that total, it's, it's actually adding up from here to here and then the ATP you're making in electron transport.
And it's a lot to look at here, <laughs> but uh, again, I'm just trying to highlight the differences between these three. And again, a lot of similarities between anaerobic and aerobic respiration. The big difference are the electron acceptors, and that's what you want to look for when you're trying to figure out which is which. I thank you very much, and please contact me with